Hey folks, Michael McGee. This is Katie Bell. She's she was our horse back when we were living in the Amish. And what we need to do is we've got a field of corn that needs to be cultivated. She hasn't cultivated corn in at least 22 years. I think she still should know how, should remember how to do it. Let's go see if she remembers. I guess one question is, do I remember how to get a horse harnessed and ready to go? Let's see if I can remember. Yeah, baby girl, it's fixing to be time to work a little. You ain't done anything like this in a long time. Many years. All right, right here we got a cinch this around her girdle, her girth. Now we've got to bring this between her two front feet and clip these on. That holds the, this is the breeching. These are the traces. We'll take these off and hook them to our cultivator. So it looks like that's all holding together good. These harness were built by a guy named Roger Foyer years ago back in the Amish community. And they have held up even through the neglect and everything. We just, it's amazing how a tractor, working a tractor will kind of spoil you. But she's ready to go. Actually, I got to put the saddle on her. We'll see how she remembers these old days. Ear through, ear through. There we go. Head up. That keeps her from putting her head down right there. That keeps her head up. Otherwise, she'll be eating all my corn up. These are the check lines that hooks into the bit. All right, this is called a hame. The hame is strapped to the collar. The harness is all connected to the hames, and they are actually doing the pulling of this machine. Now, basically, we're ready to rock and roll. Let's get up to the cornfield and see how this goes. See you after mass. Sorry you can't go along. Now I'm going to let David lead her the first round or two, if not more. Wait just a minute. All right, let's go. Right down the middle. She don't like it. She said this is not what retirement's all about. Come on, Kate, get up. Come on. Hey, get up. All right. People think that a horse is a sweet baby doll that wants to do anything that you want it to do. That's a myth. They don't care what you want them to do until you get them trained to do it. She's been re retired for 22 years. She thought walking without pulling something was so much better. This is not pulling her hard. I don't understand why it's such a big deal. Let's try again real quick. Go down that second one there, right there, yeah. Easy, come around. Twerk. If 
good workout. Good workout for the horse, good workout for the man. Nothing wrong with it. And a good working up for the soil. These old rag weeds and cuckaburs, morning glory, it's all met its match now. You need to stay close to the right side this time. I think he's coming back to the old girl. I think she finally decided this ain't that bad after all. We got her in the shade right now. She should be pretty happy. Let's stay kind of on the right side. We might want to come back through and hit the left. If you want this machine to go to the to the left, push down on the right handle. If you want it to go to the right, push down on the left handle. That's how you control these things without fighting them. Get up here. YMCA for horses. Come around. Come around. The right side of the same row we were on. Now get the yeah, from behind. I want to hit that middle right here. Okay, let her break. Take a break. You want to take a break, Katie? <laughs> Best thing in the world ever happened to a horse, work. That's when they're their best. That's when they are actually their happiest. And they get calmed down and they just mellow out and turn into a good animal. All right, break time's over, girl, let's go. Oh, oh, oh. Look right here at the sweat beads coming out. Her, her flank, she's breathing heavy. When you overwork them, you'll notice their muscles in the shoulders will just start trembling, just, bah, 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 just shaking like they're shivering. That's when you know you've worked them a little too long. She's not worked too long, but she's softer than butter. So we ain't gonna overwork her right now to start with. We want to do this whole field, so if we're going to do the whole field, we're just going to take our time, let her rest. We'll get there. It's still faster than using a walk behind tiller, believe it or not. We're pretty excited about this cornfield because this is the one that we're crossing the trucker's favorite with the yellow Guatemalan corn. We want to do everything we can to ensure a good crop. All right, girl, it's time to go. Time to move on. All right, let's go.
road girl. Time for a break anyway. Boys and girls, let me tell you, she took this like bacon to a hot skillet. Man, I'm telling you what. Been a long time. Been longer than some of you been born watching. 22 years since she done this. You might be wondering how old is she? She was two years old in 1998. That's when we got her. And she actually belongs to my sister, Melissa, who will probably be watching this video in Alberta, Canada. She can't have the horse in Canada, but I can have her. And I, we just been keeping her on here. So she's earning her feed today. She used to work for it every day, pretty much. Now she's, she's retired old thing. Now for this little narrow section, all I've got to do, push this forward, narrows it right up. It'll hit just what I want, see? I bought this piece of equipment at an auction when a Amish fella by the name of Levi Stoffer sold out and moved. He moved to Bolivia at that time. He's come back to the United States now, but I bought this for over $200 in that auction. I got into a bitter war with a fella by the last name of Harper and I just wasn't, I was, oh, how old would I have been? Eight, 19, 20 years old. I wasn't aiming for nobody to outbid me that day on this. I wanted this. So, so I got this and believe it or not, I still have it, still use it. Well worth the money. And I think it's time to go. Try to get her in a the roll there. Hey buddy, have you ever seen such a thing? Animals pulling machinery? Huh? You better not cause us no trouble. We'll have to tell you to go home, but yeah. Yeah, just don't bark at my horse and make her spook. A lot of you guys don't realize you live out west where it gets hot. It might be 105, 110 degrees. And here we've only got maybe 85 or 88 or 90. But it's worse, I promise you, than your 105 because we have 95% humidity a lot of the time. Even if it's 80% humidity, you're just drenched. For example, take this horse and her feet and you can see what we deal with. That's why we go through clothes. During the day, we'll change our clothes, try to get a new pair of clothes to be dry because it allows the breeze to go through. People say it, it, that when you sweat, helps you cool off. That's true up to a point. Once you slick over and it's totally wet, it's just like you're encased, you can't get away from it. So just talking about that makes me want to work more. Let's get with it. All right, horse, time to get up. Uh, Step up, Kate. Get in there. Step lively now. Look at this little section of red Georgia clay here. I don't know what I did to deserve that. Look at them weeds. You gotta get them out of here. <laughs>
Malcolm. She said, gladly will I stop and rest. If horse wants to go back in retirement, I know what she wants. She's doing great, I tell you. I just don't know how well she would respond to doing strictly from reins because she's kind of careless about where she's stepping. The old mule, the old kit mule I had would walk straight as an arrow and you could direct him real easy. A little bit to the right, a little bit to the left. And man, you could go right beside plastic rows or... Man, he was, she was good. All right, okay, time to move. She thought that was a resting spot because that's where she rested last time. They got a really good memory when it comes to the resting spot. That's their highlight. That's what they look forward to. When they're on the other end coming this way, that's what they're thinking about, this spot right here. That's why you never rest them both ends of the field. Otherwise, you'll have to stop at both ends of the field. Come here, Caleb. Stand right here and hold these. Now, I'll go along with you and I'll tell you which way. Now, if you want it to go that way, do you know what to do? Yeah, see, you already know. See, I'm sweating like a dog. I, 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 need, to, I need a break. You're, the, you're dry as a bone. Man, dry as a chip, even his underpits. Oh, my goodness. This time gets you lathered up, son. <laughs> I think we need to try it out. I think we need to try it. Let's try it out. I'll, I'll run the lines. That's, that's the hard part. All right, let's go. Get up. Don't let it get in on the corn now. Push down on this side. Down, see, down. Push down right there. There we go, down, there we go. Now we're in that clay. And this kind of, whoops. going off without a hitch except for her she's hitched up to the plow we're getting done pretty exciting this is what will make you feel independent from the government from society from the gas station and from about everything else if you want if you live anywhere around Amish country they sell horses after they get old as this one they would sell this horse they wouldn't keep this horse this horse can't work all day long this is the perfect horse for somebody like you like me that doesn't need to work them all day long i highly recommend you to go ahead and pick one up get you some old harness nylon it won't rot like the old leather and you'll be prepared just in case I, every time i say this people get on and say oh it won't never happen in your kid's lifetime it will it will. Sometime or other, there's going to be a gas crisis. We've done, I've seen gas shortages. And when somebody can get on and shut down the, the main fuel line and cause disruption for a major part of the United States and pull in as many million as them guys did with their little scam, yeah, it'll happen in our lifetime. You just wait and see. It's just a matter of time. There ain't nothing wrong with having a little horse on the back 40 just in case you need her. Whoa. I don't know what goes through your head when you see something like this, 
Maybe you think, oh, that is neat. Maybe you think, oh, that's animal cruelty. Maybe you think that's old fashioned. I don't know what you think when you see something like this. But what I see is self-sufficiency and independence. That's what I see. And I see a horse that needs to be worked. It's good. It's good when a horse gets worked. So if you've ever dealt with young horses, say a year and a half, two to three year old that's never been worked and hasn't been trained to work, they're a danger to society. They'll get you hurt in a heartbeat. If you're gonna do it, don't just go to the horse sale and listen to a horse trader. The, the term horse trader has become synonymous with liar, uh, car salesman type people. Don't just listen to any horse trader you come across because they all have the best. You wanna go somewhere that literally worked that horse for years and have it dead broke. That's what you want if you can. We're gonna ride. All right. How's it feel up there? Pretty good? Here, I'll give you the camera and you can video what it's like to ride a horse while cultivating. You can try to video ahead and behind. Just don't drop this fancy iPhone of mine, okay? Here. <laughs> All right, let's go, boys. <laughs> Get in there. She tests to see if she's gonna get a break back here. She likes to get that break. That's her main love in life, that break. She's definitely built for retirement. tell somebody that don't had never drove a horse before they'll hold lines like this what are you gonna do if if, <laughs> if the horse runs away you've already maxed out you can't do nothing you got to have your hands forwards like this then you've got some leverage you can come back on that thing another thing is when you're doing this at the same time you got to multitask you got to hold it like this so that if you want that horse to turn to the left, you can let go and let, let this one slide forwards or let go and let this one slide forward while simultaneously holding the other one. Very important things to know. <clears throat> and you got it over your head like this and oh, under this arm, over this shoulder, that's how you have the most ability to control. Anytime something goes wrong, you gotta be ready to react extremely quickly. So that's just a pointer from someone that worked a horse a time or two. All right, give me that phone and I'm gonna try to video while running this thing and we'll see how that goes. Hello. Now all you gotta do is ride, you don't have to video. All right, you see them traces right there, folks? You don't want, when she turns, you don't want her stepping over that and getting outside of that. That would be a bad thing. So at the end, when she turns, it's always important to keep that in mind. All right. This is a line. It's used for swatting. Matt's got his feet over it, so I can't swat him. But I can swat the horse. Get it. And they're off. 
And I ain't showing you much. I'm trying to hang on. In the Georgia clay again. Coming out of it. Getting around this last of the corn. Barely slipped around it without cutting it down. Woo! Oh! All right. This is what it looks like at the other end of the field. I did all those terraces, lots of terraces down through here where the, the water run, runs down through there. Ain't had a drop of rain since. Where's he going? He's going to look at his pumpkin patch. He's got a nice little pumpkin patch up there. All right, Caleb, your turn to video for a while. Ah, yes, sir, focus. here. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Get up, haul. We're getting ready to do the last run you see behind me, and we're gonna call it a day. It's good old hot Tennessee muggy, what we call the dog days of summer. We're happy to have this field cultivated. We're going through a dry spell right now. There is some moisture in the ground here, but we were supposed to get rain time after time, and we barely get enough to get the ground wet, and before the next rain hits, it's already dried out again. So here's something an old man told me. Back in the day when they would have some terrible drought, they'd have farmers living all up down the road there that had different ideas. Some of them said they wouldn't cultivate if the weeds weren't growing because of the drought. Other guys would get out and cultivate anyway, just because it was the right thing to do. Those guys would make a crop, the lazy farmer wouldn't get any ears of corn whatsoever. The corn needs cultivating whether there's weeds or not. And that's what we're doing if it gets dry, 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 this loose dirt will act as a insulation from that heat and that dry, and it'll stay moist underneath longer. So that is yet one more tip from my Gee Homestead Adventures. I'm about to melt down here, but we're almost done, so it don't matter. Cold shower on the way. I am gonna get on out of here. I appreciate you so much. We appreciate you so much. We hope you have a great day. We'll see you on the next video. All right, oh, a horse fly. You ever wonder why they call them horse flies? Because they like to gnaw on horses. There's a dead one. Time to get the old girl out of her work clothes. She says, I am ready to get out of these work clothes. We're gonna take this hames, set back here like this. Then we're gonna take this breeching, pull it up like this. And we're gonna stick our arm under there. One, two, three. Grab the hem on the other side. Here we go. Now it's ready to be hung up properly.